How about in terms of getting a execution and getting people to deliver on their promises and be held accountable for their promises, how, could you talk a little bit about how it worked in terms of performance processes going, you know, kind of promises made up and down the chain of command, but also promises across the different units to the extent folks had to work with one another to achieve an objective. How did, how did, you, how uh, did what, you manage what that? We, what we always did is, uh, first of all, with this target setting and cascading, I mean, uh, every individual, including myself or everyone else, will have actually three sets of targets. The company target, the, his business unit targets, and then his individual targets. So if, if the company doesn't make the targets, I'm out. So I better be sure that I'm collaborating in terms of business units. So second, if my business unit doesn't make the target, no individual in it will make its target. So again, either I collaborate or not. And then it gets to the individual targets where there, there could be a conflict of myself trying to do, do this and that. But again, that's the third step, never the, never the first. So if, I, if we didn't kind of roll in the same direction, I'll never get to my individual targets and then my bonus. But again, those are processes that it's very easy to, to explain, but very, very, not difficult, but lots of works to lot of work to implement. So you really have to be sure that you have the, the right targets, that they really interact with each other, they are not disconnected from each other, that you really can be, can be able to measure and revise them. And, and moreover, that, that you have a, a performance appraisal process that works. I mean, that, that the guy has at least twice a year, uh, he knows how his performance is, is going on, what he needs to what he needs to do to get the, his act together, and so on. And this, again, is part of the execution and implementation. Lots of work done. I mean, it's really, it's really, really tiresome, but it's essential. I mean, most people even like the, those, the aspects of those things when I, when I, when I, when, when I tell them about them. I mean, the, the discipline to execute, that's the hard part, mm. and it's tiresome. Now, how about given this um, uh, this emphasis? You know, you have so you have these very talented young people and very talented people in general coming up. You know, clear objectives. Um, there's always this risk in organizations that people become too narrowly focused. Now, you talked about the incentive component, about that, how the incentive, the structure of incentives uh, and, and the partnership in particular kind of mitigates that every man or every woman for him or herself. But are there other mechanisms that you use to help people to coordinate, uh, to collaborate better with one another, to kind of mitigate that risk? I think that the, the most important word here is ownership. No, I mean, uh, if I could define the whole culture of Ambev, Inbev, Brahma, is a culture of ownership uh, to the extent that people really act and feel like owners. We, we, we really push them to do so, and they, in the end, they are owners because they own a lot of stock in the company. So this make a, makes a lot of, of difference. I mean, when you're taking decisions, so we, we saw a lot of, of people taking decisions that, will, that would affect their immediate pay and that's a difficult <laughs> decision to take, knowing that this was the better for the company and the company where they were invested in. So I think that in the end, the way to solve that, and not many companies do it, uh, is to give ownership to the, to the employees. And again, I would like to stress that it's ownership because stock options is the following. The upside is mine, the downside belongs to the company, I'll just move. Uh, across the street. So I'm not a great believer in options. I mean, if you are a real owner, it, if it really hurts in you anything that goes wrong with the company or that could go wrong, then your attitude is totally different. Mm -hmm. And does, how does that scale? Because one of the things is, if, uh, you know, as, a, as an organization with 12,000 people, you know, primarily in Brazil, and then you get bigger with the Antarctica deal and then so forth, uh, the, the risk is that the, the cost to you personally is high, but the benefit is more dispersed as you get bigger. How how does that? How do you maintain that as you've gone through a succession of deals that have made you a larger organization? Well, I think uh, that is still is still the same. I mean, if you if you have people investing most of their their net worth in the stock of the company, and of course, if the company is successful, 
people really pay a, a, a lot of attention not only on what's close to them, uh, even what's not very close. So they will challenge other people in terms of their targets and objectives. They will challenge people when they see something that doesn't conform to the culture or the, where we, we want to get. You know, I mean, it's a, it's a culture of owners, open space, and huge transparency. We, we love this word transparency, and sometimes we take it a little to the, to, the, to the extreme, but I mean, people is used to that, so it's no big deal. But sometimes I hear things that I don't really like to hear, but that's it.